A very common experiment that teachers get students to do while at school, while learning probability, is an experiment that looks at a drawing pen and just dropping it on the table. Um, aside from uh, a few injuries here or there where children start poking each other with uh, drawing pens, it's, a, it's an excellent way of introducing what is called relative frequency. So there are some experiments some uh, probabilities that we cannot work out a theoretical probability very easily. And by a theoretical probability, I mean, well, when I roll a die, um, the probability of getting a 6 is 1 over 6. That's easy enough, okay? We know that. Or the probability of flipping a coin and getting a heads. We know that's 1 half. And that's the theoretical probability, the probability that we kind of expect uh, to get. However, what is the probability of me dropping a drawing pin and it landing either point down or point up? That one's a little bit more difficult to calculate. In fact, it's a lot more difficult to calculate. And really the only way of determining these probabilities is through experiment. So, um, for example, another experiment that uh, would be calculated in manufacturing would be... Uh, the length of time a bulb uh, will turn on for, okay, how long will it work for. So you would have to test hundreds of bulbs to get a good idea of the probability. So with dropping a drawing pin, for example, it may well be that after 10 trials, okay, so after 10 trials, we find that we've got um, f six uh, that landed point down and four that landed point up. Okay? So the probability of getting point down currently is six out of ten. Okay? But we may not be convinced by just doing 10 trials. So we do another 10 trials. So we're now at 20 trials. And over the 20 trials, we actually find that we've got 8 and 12. Okay? So over 20 trials, we now have 8 out of 20. But then we do another 10 trials, okay? So then we've got a probability, um, let's say we go up to uh, 16, and now we've got 14, okay? And then we do another 10 trials, and then we're up to 25 and 15, okay? And then we do another 10 trials, and now we're up to, um, let's say 35 and 50. Okay, so the more trials we do, the closer we would expect the probabilities to be to the actual probability. So although, you know, I'm coming up with these numbers off the top of my head, you would expect that if you measured probability from zero to one, and then the number of trials on the bottom, then as the number of trials increases, you would expect that the probability would start off kind of quite jagged, but then it would start to fizzle and go towards a certain value. Okay, so the more trials you do, the more consistent it becomes. And so this is the concept behind relative frequency. So that by the time I've done 50 trials, 35 out of 50 is a better probability and a more accurate probability than my first 10 trials. So let's see what this means.
Um, let's get rid of that. Let's say that um, in 200 trials, I find that 83 uh, were point down, and the remaining 117 were point up. So the relative frequency of the probability being point down is 83 out of 200. Okay, which you could write as a decimal, okay, um, which is 41.5, okay, and then let's say um, this was the probability I was working with, then if I performed uh, let's say 10,000 trials, how many would I expect to be point down? So let's, if I'd continued on to 10,000 trials, um, how many would I expect to be point down? Well, that expected amount is equal to the number of trials multiplied by the probability. Okay, so this is a proportion of the number of trials. So I would expect 4,150 of those trials to have the drawing pin being pointed point down. Okay, so that's what I would expect. Um, let's look at another example. Just to make sure that this is clear. Let's say the probability of, um, let's continue with the weather theme, um, that it's going to be raining tomorrow. And let's say that this is 0 0.8. Or let's just say the probability of rain is 0 0.8. Then, out of uh, 20 days, how many would I expect it to rain on? So, you would get the number of days and multiply that by the probability of it raining. Okay, so this is like the 10,000 multiplied by the 0 0.415. It's the number that I want to look at multiplied by the probability. And so I would expect that out of the 20 days, 16 would have C rain. So this is how we work with relative frequency. It might be that um, you'll see a graph similar to how I drew the sketch that I drew earlier. But in a lot of cases it will be how many would you expect given the probability and given the number of trials.